So I'm going over with the uh, inflate or deflate tool, uh, brush tool, and I just uh, pulls all the faces closer, closer together along their normal. So then uh, those wide rings that was before, they kind of just grow tighter and tighter. And also you in increase the distance between each ring. So you get these really nice gaps. Hey, how's it going? So I decided just to sculpt a goat today. For some reason I had uh, the impulse of sculpting, sculpting goats. And um, I took some liberties with this sculpt. I just looked at uh, a couple of references. Uh, it was a couple of uh, images of um, some goat skulls and uh, just some ordinary portraits of uh, goats in general. And I just had it off screen to, um, to look at them there. Uh, when I started out with the Mimala, I wasn't really sure where to go with it, but I wanted to make it a bit more demon <laughs> demonic, so um, I took and enlarged the uh, supraorbital ridge, which is the uh, like the, uh, the ridge over the eye sockets. So I just make them really large so I can kind of exaggerate those features and make it, the uh, figure look a bit more angry. Because uh, Ghost doesn't have those uh, such a large ridge like that, but uh, just exaggerating those features, I, it's it's easier to uh, create something that looks a bit more angry and evil. And uh, for the eyes, I decided to make them shut because um, if I was gonna create the eyes as well, I would have to kind of form the uh, surface of the eyelids uh, relative to the eye socket that is below. So I had to follow a uh, a shape. And again, I just thought stitching it together seems evil, seems demonic, so... Uh, so I saved some time there and also gave the, uh, the goat some character. So at this stage I'm just using uh, a variety of brushes. I use the, uh, the draw and uh, I also often use the snake hook with the K. So, because that works with uh, the Donatopo. The usual grab tool doesn't really work with Donatopo, so if you drag something, it doesn't really retopolize or adaptively tessellate the geometry that you drag out. But in some some instances that can be convenient, but uh, usually I want the uh, adaptive tess tessellation. Also these uh, rings on the horns, uh, they're not really... Um, well, I paint them really big now, and also when I started forming the horns earlier, I made them really thin because I knew that when I started sculpting on these, they would expand outwards. I rarely sculpt inwards, I always sculpt upwards, so everything becomes a bit larger when I start working on it. So uh, when I put on these rings, I think it becomes a decent size for uh, what I wanted. Something that it looks pretty po powerful, but... Um, uh, well, it's not uh, ridiculously huge either. And um, yeah, so these rings right now are kind of big. Um, after a while I will use the deflate or inflate uh, tool uh, with a very large uh, effect area. And uh, yeah, we'll see it soon. But uh, those uh, large rings on top or the bulgy uh, contour of the rings will eventually shrink down to become pretty narrow after I use the deflate tool. We'll see that in a couple of minutes. Whenever you work on small details like this, like these rings going around the object, it's super important to have a separate viewport on the side which is uh, kind of zoomed out so you get a sense of the proportions of the rings that you're painting. Like if I didn't have a way of getting a sense of what the actual size of what I'm actually painting is, then I would um, risk uh, either painting these rings way too small or way too big, and I wouldn't really know uh, when um, or how far out I should have painted these. So because I had a viewport on the side, uh, I, knew for, I knew for sure when I was painting it too far out and when I was painting it not enough uh, outwards. And here I'm uh, just using the grab tool to kind of adjust the, or to kind of drag some parts of the geometry downwards because I started sculpting it really linearly, really systematic and linear downwards. 
the horn and uh, just by using grab tool I can create some basic waviness to the uh, to the rings and notice when I paint or sculpt down the curves uh, the curve on the inner inner side of the horn is uh, shorter sort of than the outside so um, if I want these to kind of align downwards I have to create a larger ring on the outside and then on the inside to make sure that I can uh, get an even distribution of the rings going downwards. And also I think I could have said a lot of time if I had taken my time earlier when I started painting the horn just going into the curve editor and just uh, creating a proper curve there because um, because I was just using the standard curve uh, on it, um, I didn't really get the curves that I wanted for the rings when I started painting it in. So if I had gone into the curve editor and just set the curve right, I could have just made a couple strokes or maybe one stroke all around the uh, the horn and it would be done. But uh, because I didn't, I have to kind of paint it multiple times with um, uh, different strengths to uh, get the curvature that I wanted for the ring. And I think the nose region and the nose bone going up to the face is so important for the uh, this goatee in particular because um, you can define so much musculature in that region. Because I wanted a goat that was uh, really strong uh, while also being really old and tortured. And um, the nose is super important for this. And you can notice by just pinning in some simple strokes on the top of the nose bone and also defining the nose a bit more, I have given this uh, goat a bit more character or a, say, or a strong character than it was before. So now it's a nice combination of strong, but old and tortured. So I had uh, done a pretty bad job at the eye so far. I hadn't really put in the right detail into it, but um, just by putting in these uh, forms around the stitches, um, really helps connecting the uh, stitches to the uh, skin um, and it tells a bit a little bit about how long it's been there like it's been it so long that the skin has kind of like started fusing with the uh, with the stitches and uh, also just fixed up the uh, the eyelids for a, a bit there and it was it was just a complete mess for a while there but uh, I was just tightening it up a little bit and just putting a bit more in place and also um, yes <laughs> this is an I messed up so I wasted so much time here but I wanted to see how it would look if I just covered some parts of the horn with uh, some golden metal or something you know some it's a classical um, decoration for uh, ornaments. So I'm going over with the uh, inflate or deflate tool, uh, brush tool and it just uh, pulls all the faces closer, closer together along their normal. So then uh, those wide rings that was before they kind of just grow tighter and tighter and also you in increase the distance between each ring so you get these really nice gaps like that and uh, you get a really nice curve between as well. Now again, just going back to the model, I had no idea what to do here actually, so I just uh, took a pause there and just wonder where, what, what I was going to do next. But um, I'm going to go over eventually and just um, put in some uh, uh, more wrinkles there. I'm just going uh, over with the crease brush just to sharpen up the, uh, the creases. This is supposed to be some upper lip and uh, some folding of the uh, upper and uh, the, uh, the flesh inside the mouth, basically. And I was thinking of taking this model into uh, making low poly and also texture, to texture it, so that uh, folding in there would be uh, like dark red or something. And I did some mistakes here. I uh, increased the size of uh, these uh, stitches. That's the word. I couldn't think of it earlier. <laughs> but the stitches. I uh, increased the size of those at this point, and uh, then the size of the stitches in the eye sockets or eyelids, and uh, the stitches down there are uh, in different sizes. And it's not really. I wanted there to be like um, a sense that. Uh, 
these were stitched together at the same time, so then you would use the same kind of thread, right? So um, this is, that is something I correct uh, later. And uh, these small details really helps with the stitches as well. When I painted in, painted it in on the eyelids as well, it helped a lot with uh, just uh, showing how it kind of pulls the skin or how it stretches around when you have these uh, stitches in. So now I'm coming into the stage where I just put in more detail. Um, usually I, uh, well, usually I just leave this to the very end. So to make sure that I have all the geometry or the surfaces that I want, all the detail, general detail in, uh, in large terms. And um, yeah, usually I, I paint in the minor details at the very end. For the entire model, but because because I but because I wasn't really sure where to go with this model, I just uh, kind of just painted it small details wherever uh, when I wasn't really sure where to go next. And um, the uh, also the wrinkles or the foldings of the skin along the uh, the nose bone. Again. Um, I didn't really have a good reference for that. For that, I'm not really sure how that would fold on an on an actual goat in real life. But uh, man, I always get uh, 2.8 has really nice uh, mat matcap uh, materials right now. In um, uh, 2.79, they had it there as well, but uh, it wasn't really that performative. Like it performed really slow when you activated it, so I couldn't really use it that. For that long, I used it in the beginning, but after a while, I had to switch it off because the performance became uh, not very good. Now, I'm just uh, putting in some uh, asymmetrical patterns, um, just some interest points, so uh, you kind of disguise the symmetry of the model so far. And I wanted to insert some more detail here, but I wasn't really sure what to go for. But I wanted the, uh, the right now, I wanted the layer underneath to be the bone. But I didn't really look too much on the reference. I think if I actually wanted to draw or sculpt the bone underneath, I would have to follow some different um, shapes there. And here I just wasted some time. Um, I wanted to kind of uh, make the uh, nose underneath uh, cracked. But uh, when you're doing sculpting in Blender like this and using Dunno Topo, um, making holes in the geometry, it's just a huge pain in the ass, and I just chose to go away from it. Uh, finally, or and this is not the final thing, but uh, I, I had to make the ear of the creature, but I kind of didn't want to make the ear too big. I didn't want it to be like a dominating uh, thing in image. So, uh, and also, if this is like a tortured animal or whatever this is, like a de demonic animal, then I wanted it to be a bit more damaged. So I kind of um, broke off the ears, right? Uh, I guess the face. So there's his ears are really small, but uh, and also to increase the demonic imagery of this uh, goat a bit more, I just uh, decided to insert uh, cheek horns. So overall, I think I'm I'm feeling okay with this sculpt. Okay, it's not a masterpiece or anything, but I didn't really put that much time into this. Just a short afternoon sculpt. And um, yeah, there's many ways I can improve. I could uh, improve the. Uh, the gash on the uh, whatever it's called, the wound on the nose or something. So a lot of ways I can improve this, and also look into how the skin would fold. Um, but this is fine. And uh, for the render, I just put a metallic material on it and put it put on a decent roughness value, and I just put in three point lights, gave them a red value, and used a HRI to fill in the uh, the surroundings. And uh, that's it.